Get your land, land to be water, though, Oh, no, it's like good to see you. Yeah. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Well, it's good to see you. Always glad to be here. What'd you do with your mate? My wife? Jock. He hasn't shown up. He didn't, he didn't fly out of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the best come one. On, We've come got on. the leader. Come on. Edward hands now. And I'll see you later, eh? What are you doing? I'll be spending out. What's that? Jock is not going to make it. No. And Jean, you are? Yeah. All right? Okay. Well, I'll see you later. What, what's your first name is again? Yeah. I think we've got to find out. Here are the two pilots. And they're the blokes that brought you. Now you, you brought Jim Davies and his crew from Darwin down here. This is the skipper Yep, I was his cousin. That was a 27 dive boy. He came out with the uh, with General Brer. When he came out, he had commandeered me into his staff. We came out in a beach class, so our aircraft, which uh, were diverted came into Bristol and uh, our group, that group was chosen to fight here, right? We're running back. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. I was in Amberley yeah. and I was posted to a stores depot in yeah. Brisbane. I thought, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> when I got there, <laughs> they said we've never had a, an engine fitter at a stores depot. You better go and work in the garage. That didn't make me too happy. So about a week later, I was called into the CO, and there's a squadron over there. Yeah. And he said, my name's Rockingham. Oh, and I said, uh, steady. I'm appointed engineering liaison officer for the yeah. raft of the American Air Corps. Yeah. And I asked from the system that was a, an engine fitter that worked on American aircraft. Is that you? I said, yeah. And that was the start of it. Okay. So uh, then we... Uh, you right? Yeah. 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 We, we then about a couple of weeks later, the Yanks arrived here. And uh, we were working with out at Eagle Farm. Actually, the aircraft didn't arrive straight away, but we already had uh, 75 squadron kitty hawks. We got from the Yanks, they were on their way to the Philippines, but they were diverted to Australia, and Hamlock took them over. But they had no resources at all, American spares. So their job was to liaise the Americans to get the bits and pieces to keep flying. So can you remember when they, when they arrived here? I can remember when the aircraft had to arrive here, they used to lift them off. They were. They looked like a Liberty ship with just a flat deck on top. And they had a lot of kitty hawks on them, just on the wheels, no wings on them. They just lift them, and they towed them up, race course road, and they put the wings on the legal farm. That's where my wife lived. And tell me about the gates. Oh well, there were some Negroes on guards at the gates here, and they couldn't get some of the heavy. Uh, I think it was military equipment through the Brett's gates, so they just commandeered a a dose and pushed the gates over. And there was held a plate by him in a couple of days. I mean, different army blokes jumped up and down, Brett's wharf jumped up and down, but the Yanks said, oh, we've got them. They're through. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, when they arrived, they arrived. Yeah, they arrived in mass, in mass. Thousands of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, Brisbane sort of was taken by storm. Yeah. Because, I mean, you would have known they were coming, but I, I dare say... No, we, we, we knew they were coming, but we didn't know actually the date they were on. The RAAF hierarchy in Melbourne had uh, warning of the uh, kitty hawks being given to us. And they were assembled, I think, in Bankstown down in Sydney. And, uh, they, uh, but we had no, no bits and pieces to keep them flying. Would have been a bit of a shock to the Brisbane residents around here? Oh, yeah, well, they got used to it pretty quickly. Uh, but I mean, when they first when turned... When they first arrived, yeah, it was a bit of a shock because the, the local civilians had no idea what was happening. You didn't. Only, all you saw what was in the paper. 
And they arrived with a... Uh, Keith, did the Americans arrive with a big bang? No, not really. They were just, they were here. They just, there was no big fanfare about it. Not, not. There were big fanfares later on when some of the uh, service troops arrived, like uh, Navy blokes, Navy ships came in here, and, uh, aircraft carriers came in here. Uh, you know, things, Brisbane was a really busy place, and uh, they were talking about the Brisbane line, they'd have to evacuate Australia, from just north of Brisbane. But then things moved from here to Townsville, Townsville became that. And then eventually to Mo Moresby and we moved further on. But th this was the main headquarters for the American spare parts of the whole Pacific. And when they arrived, the locals, what, they would have been a bit shocked? Yeah, they, I, I, I didn't have much to do with the locals, because when you're in the service, you, you live a different kind of life altogether. But uh, all we ever saw occasionally was a bit in the paper, but they jumped up and down about it. But they saved our our bacon now. I mean, if the Yanks hadn't come, I mean, anyone that condemns the Yanks, they, they just don't know what went on behind the scenes. I mean, the amount of gear they poured into us here, it, it was unreal. I mean, we could get, in this liaison capacity, we could ask for and get anything we wanted for these American-type aircraft in the RAF. 75 Squadron flew on up to Port Moresby. They were the first to defend the code of Port Moresby when the Japs started to march over the top of the mountain. And they got into real strife. They got down to only have one service of aircraft left. <laughs> and tell me about the gate here, I mean, and how that symbol, symboled well, how, how they operated. Well, all, all I know about the gate is that the, the, the thing was knocked over so that they could get the stuff off the wharf up Rush Course Road. They just knocked it down. They didn't ask permission, they just did it. <laughs> but that's the way they operate. What was good about the, it was the 5th Air Force, if you want to know the actual mob that were here. They were based in Columbus, Ohio. That was their home base in America. And that was the Air Force that operated in the whole Pacific during the war, which was part of the American Army. A lot of people don't realize that. The Air Force in America was part of the American Army. Their army was in control of the whole operation, really. So is it good you have, they're having this thing today? Oh, well, I'm quite interested to see how it develops and what happens, because, you know, it was all a long, long while ago. So tons of stuff and boats and oh, planes. Of unbelievable what came here, absolutely unbelievable. People just would have had no idea that the volume of equipment that was parked at Eagle Farm right down to Meander, uh, down further down, that Ford Motor Company buildings were taken over for stores and they had these big, they didn't have containers in those days, they were just great big cases of bits and pieces. But on the outside of the case, once you got to know the American system, was identified. It had a classification on class 0104, that was parts for kitty hawks. 0107 was so and so, so and so. So you, you knew what you were looking for. All that. They were very organised. Very Funny old time for Brisbane, hey? Oh, we grew up, well, I mean, I was only, what, 22 or something. So, you know, you grew up all the quick. <laughs> you had to. You, you had responsibilities that you never dreamed about. But it was a wonderful experience. Okay. In two shots? Yeah, just get it. No, I'm about 24, I think. Okay. I'm 82 now. How long ago is that? 1941. Yeah. 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 Okay, and so this became the, the operation. This, then this they moved up to towns and they put all their planes up. Thanks, mate. We're all right. Yeah, I don't want to steal this place. 
some of that. I had a lot to do with the two-star general here, General Canella, I don't think you'd be sure you watching. He was in the room. Right about he was running the show from Fort Bosley. Oh, well, I know where he went. So I've been since I was 1942, and that was established in Bosley. Yeah, that was... <laughs> we did, we did meet. Yes. Well, there you are, there are the three flag colours. The three pieces we're supposed to do. So that seems, yeah. Over here. Yeah, right. they're right. Um, Mr. Mr. Tunney's here. Near you, during the war, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Anderson. I'm just coming out of the American Legion. Now, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, hang on, hang on. Come on. Follow me around with a bit. And I think it'll be on to rumoured. We are about to unveil the obelisk or the rock with the plaque, Fifth Air Force and those who flew in Australia who preceded and built the Fifth Air Force. Followed by Mr. Max Allerman of Qantas, this one that we're thinking of today. Um, Representing the RAAF, Flight Lieutenant Ian Green. Okay. Representing the United States 5th Air Force and their proceeders, Major General William G. Hipps. <laughs> and representing Qantas Empire Ways, Mr. Max Allerman.
look about white. I can't see that. Uh, Corps, Army Air Corps, yeah. a comparable aircraft okay. known as the T-6. Okay. It was a trainer, same. Uh, what's it like being back here in Brisbane? It's wonderful to come back here. The Australians, I came from the Philippines in late December, and I never, I had nothing but the shirt on my back, literally. We evacuated quickly. And the reception we received and the help we got was wonderful. I'll never forget it. Now you were part of, I guess, that, that big thrust which, you know, built up there. No, I was part of the Far East Air Force headquarters with General uh, Brer. And we came into Darwin and then took off immediately and went into Java. And we stayed in Java. I stayed in Java until it surrendered and I was lucky to get out and come back down to Boom on an evacuation aircraft and ended up in Melbourne. Okay. And then went to Moresby from there and helped establish the headquarters of the 5th Air Force that was created in July of 1942. Now I've heard Australia referred to as the big stationary aircraft carrier. I mean, is that how it really was? Well, Australia, what the United States was doing when the Philippines were blockaded, the decision was made in Washington all of the reinforcements that were to have built up the Philippine defenses would be diverted to Australia. And uh, that's what was happening. All the airmen, airplanes, and everything were coming in here that otherwise would have gone to buck up the Philippines, which never happened. We were dead in the water in the Philippines. So Queensland was quite strategic in that sense? Pardon? Queensland was quite strategic. Yes. This, the combination of the delay of uh, the Japanese plan, they were going to take New Guinea, you know, right away, and then move into northern Australia. That was their overall plan. The fact that they were delayed by the, the holdout on Bataan, instead of their capturing it in late February, they didn't get it till May. A lot of reinforcements went in. In the meantime, they lost a lot of things. And, and, and Brisbane was obviously pretty important? Yes. How important was it? Brisbane? Yeah. Well, it was a major operation. But they, they didn't have a chance, really. The after the Battle of Midway, the thing was pretty well decided that Australia was safe. From there on, it was just a matter of how fast we could build up and get back there. And obviously you did so, all that, I guess, history. So it's nice to get, I mean, what's it mean to be back here now for this? It's just wonderful to re retrace steps and to see people and meet people. And it okay. brings back all of them. And did you actually fly down in a, in a Qantas plane? Or you, you, you never... No, I came out in a uh, Philippine airline beach craft. I was headed for Java. I ended up in Java and was on General Lavelle's staff there, known as Abnicom. Okay. And from the Americans' point of view, was Australia just another place where it could stop and build a base and move on? Or? No, no, this, this, was a, this was a solid base where we could build the things we need. In Townsville, we had a major depot once. And it, we didn't have to go back to the United States for support. That was a major air depot built in Townsville. So obviously we couldn't do without you, but you couldn't have done without us. Well, we had originally planned to have a depot just inland at the moment. And that was when the original plan was to abandon practically everything, moving everything down to the line of Brisbane. That was a strategic plan. That was a real plan? Well, that was the way they were planning to do things. You, because I mean, there's been lots of talk about that now, but I mean, back then, that was... Well, they, back then, you see, they, they, there were no forces available in Australia. So they were only, the problem is, what can we take care of? And that was the original plan. But once our forces began, began to come in and gave them something to work with, then all of Australia became an operation. It didn't last, that thinking didn't last very long. What's you guys doing? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll just get a quick. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so, I and so how? 
given that you are, were not intrinsically part of this, part of this, how are you here today? Why were you enlisted here today? Well, I'm just trying to <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'll just try it on Peter. Where you go? He doesn't exist. Where you go? Exactly, Now, how do you feel about today? I mean, you've been recognised, what, 53 years later? Yeah, well, it's a bit of a surprise. As a of fact, we, we uh, knew nothing about this until about a week ago. And we find ourselves here in the ceremony, which is uh, commemorating something that uh, I think probably both of us have forgotten all about. And, and was it dangerous, or was it...? significance was that we brought down the American pilots who picked up their airplanes here at Eagle Farm and then from here on uh, the Americans went to the war and took them to the shop. And so um, it's all come out of the blue again, out of, out of the blue I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's you all just pen across. Um, what, what, do you what does today mean to you? There's a fact that there's nobody here to meet with American pilots and uh, they're at a quandary of what to do with them. So uh, we, we were able to get them ashore as a courtesy of the civil aviation attendant and uh, we had to commandeer taxis and uh, get all these American pilots. So we booked them into Lennon's Hotel. Uh, I think we used things we used to use at ES4, didn't we? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 I guess, although it was a small thing, it, it was something that went on to change Brisbane, I guess. I suppose it did, it was like, it, was like, it, it wasn't apparent at the time, but of course, it, in retrospect, it probably did. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, just okay. say that. Now, one. just one. That's a song.
Aboriginal people. Uh, that's your interpretation, not mine. What about the public's perception of it then? Well, you'll have to ask the public. Can you imagine any circumstances in which a body wouldn't want to open its books? Why wouldn't they want to open their books? I, I know. I think it's totally unreasonable for any organisation not to open their books. And as I say, the vast majority uh, are more than happy. In fact, uh, nearly all. But there are some that, that won't. Have they given you a reason? No. Which groups won't open their books? Well, uh, the registrar has said, I can't detail the numbers. You'll have to ask the registrar that. He's the one that has the responsibility for examination. What sort of...